This little drone is pretty cute and let's pretend for a second that I'm doing a normal review. It comes in a nice box. User manual is exceptionally detailed. This drone is a quadcopter under 250 grams with a little 4S battery, 67-bit F10 processor with Bill Heli S H I T. I mean, who the hell even cares? All right, all right. I need a little bit more practice in the art of normal reviews. So, how you can check and prepare your pre-built drone, and also the ones you build by yourself? Why not? At least that's what I do. On the example of this Flywool Long Range 4 with DJI O3 Air Unit, but. First, let me call to my expert. Hey, Mr. Nice, what do you think about this drone? I mean, it's pretty cool, but you brought this to a race? Like, you're kind of a shit pilot for that. Um, it looks like shit pilot, too. Well, <laughs> like, I guess we're all shit pilots. All shit pilot. It's pretty rare for me to buy a pre-built drone. And when that happens, I am never satisfied until I spend like hours and hours of rebuilding and polishing. And I am not talking about how shiny the soldering job is. I don't care about that. But I need that feeling that my fleet is reliable. But it's just a feeling because we're all dealing with hobby-grade electronics. I know I'm pretty weird and quite an extreme paranoid case, but maybe you'll find some of these steps interesting or useful. And leave a comment. Under this video, maybe you have something to add. And the first thing I just want to get out of the way is this nasty socket cap screws, especially on the plate holding the battery. Imagine you crash on this drone, the battery slides forward a little bit and damages itself with these stupid socket caps. So button head screws are a little bit safer and a little bit lighter. Although you need to be more gentle with these screws and you need to have a good screwdriver. By the way, before you do any modifications to your drone, make sure that it flies. Otherwise, some of these companies out there would love to claim that it's it's your fault that it doesn't fly out of the box because you changed the screw. Not talking about flywheel in particular. The next thing you can check if your flight controller is mounted firmly. And in this case it was pretty bad, look at that. It even bangs with the standoffs. So they were not using metal nuts under the ESC to hold with the carbon. I'm talking about these nuts all the way at the bottom. If you're using rubber instead of metal here, then the whole stack, especially flight controller, will move back and forth like a pendulum. Pendulum is a weird word. Not as weird as gazebo. And honestly, I don't even like using plastic nuts here because they can like skip the thread and become loose. So yes, it's a pain in the ass to replace these nuts, but metal here is the way to go. Sometimes it can cause major problems, but in this case it wasn't anything serious. The drone did fly okay, but you can still see the improvements in the black box. So on the left you can see raw gyro traces without metal nuts, and on the right you kind of can see raw gyro traces with metal nuts and there is a little bit of an improvement and I am pretty happy with that. By the way, these screws, they have to be metal. Never ever use plastic screws because plastic screws just break. In this case, they are metal, but just in case you didn't know. While the drone is disassembled, let's take the opportunity and conformal coat all the electronics. Except the O3 Air unit because I've never waterproofed it before. If you have an experience, leave it in the comments. Amazon affiliate link to this conformal coating is in the description. To the correct one because this is acrylic and it's not as good. By the way, be careful with this substance because it's a pretty nasty chemical. Do not reuse these swabs. So the goal is not to make your drone fully waterproof, but kinda come close to that. Of course, avoid buttons, plugs and barometer. Barometer is usually a shiny metal thing with a very tiny hole in it. So I think conformal coating increases the reliability of your drone. It helps against moisture, grass juice, fire ants and whatever else you fly through or land into. Especially this little drone, it's a long range, so it's supposed to fly in the mountains with snow and fog. I wish they We've done conformal coating at the factory. Don't take me wrong, it doesn't give you any guarantee that you can fly through the rain, but I like to do it sometimes. And DJI Air units are usually okay with a little bit of water, even though it's not recommended and that's not what they officially say. But remember, you're doing everything at your own risk. I don't recommend you fly through the rain, but just sharing my experience. It's pretty sad to lose your drone just because flight controller caught a little bit of moisture. Along with conformal coating, I have B7000 glue. It's like a multi-purpose thing that I use everywhere on my drones all the time. Amazon link is right there. The first purpose of it is 
is to sort of waterproof all the plugs and secure them from unplugging accidentally because of vibrations or crashes. You can even use it to secure the UFL connections. Just make sure that it dries before you might accidentally unplug it. Then it becomes pretty nasty. And this glue is not permanent on your electronics. You just need to have a sharp tweezers, gently hook it and twist, not just rip it off. I just noticed that it says here, mad fans around the world. I guess I'm one of them. So for every plug, I put one drop of glue here and one drop of glue here. It prevents from unexpected unplugging. And I put a bunch of this glue right here, also on the other side, and it helps against moisture and vibrations. Please note that this glue is not strong enough to support your plug from ripping off from the board. For these purposes, you need to use something like E6000. Another purpose for what I'm using B7000 glue is to secure soldering joints. A good soldering joint is not a problem by itself, but the problem is this little spot where insulation ends. While you fly, all these wires do vibrate a little bit back and forth. Also, they do move when you do drone maintenance. So eventually, the little wire inside insulation right here becomes weaker and weaker and comes off. It doesn't happen in one or two batteries, but think about hours and hours you would love to fly this drone. So for all these reasons, first of all, I'll double check that all the little wires are soldered like these, pointed inside the board. And if some wires are soldered like like this, I, I just can't handle it. Calm down, bitch. This is not related to motor wires as much because they're quite fat, so we're talking about these little tiny wires. Also, I double check that the insulation comes as close to the soldering joint as possible. And we don't have like unnecessary exposed wires like this. And after that, I put B7000 everywhere here like that and it helps a lot to support all of these weak spots and pay attention that b7000 doesn't go just here it actually has to go all the way to here by the way some people might be concerned that these wires coming inside the board can mess up with your gyroscope and make like a noisy traces i've never happened that with me but try to do your best and avoid gyroscope so luckily flywood did a great job with soldering and i didn't have to redo anything but just to apply b7000 around the soldering joints. And B7000 can be used to fully waterproof your drone because you can put it on the buttons, USB plugs, but that's the topic for another video, which I'll never make. And don't try to substitute B7000 with hot glue. Hot glue is just garbage for our applications. By the way, how did you like Mr. Nice's hoodie? So the next step is thread locker, a blue thread locker. As you might know, your drone is a flying clot of vibrations. <laughs> and all the screws, metal to carbon, metal to metal, they like to come off because of vibrations. Sometimes it happens in one day, sometimes it happens in half year. Without thread locker, it's just a question when, not if. And Flywood didn't apply thread locker at all, they just ignore it. But that's an easy fix, make sure you put it on the motor screws or inside the motor threaded holes. Also on all the frame construction screws, under the metal stack nuts under ESC and standoffs. One of my viewers commented that thread locker can be dangerous for the props. So I put a bunch of thread locker on this prop blade and it was about two months ago and it's still good, I don't see any problem. Maybe some prop materials doesn't work good with it. But regardless, you shouldn't be putting thread locker anywhere except the metal threads. It's a thread locker. It's not like a prop lubricant. And it's not your GPS satellite locker. And also just use very little of it, like a half a drop per screw. I have this bottle for like two years. Link in the description. Sometimes thread locker can be a problem when you need to take the screws off. Not always a problem, but sometimes. In this case, before you strip the screw, you can heat it up with the torch lighter or a soldering iron like this like five ten seconds and then it comes off like butter Another little thing I pay attention to is the capacitor mounting. This is a little bit too far from ESC because this wire is quite long, but there is no room inside there, so it's whatever. Also, a very nice touch by Flywoo is this little panel on top of flight controller. It prevents battery strap from rubbing your little electronics and wires. If they didn't do it, I'd had to do it myself, cut it from like a plastic box or something like this. But I just can't allow battery strap to slowly wear off my flight controller or ESC. Another very important thing Thing, I can't exaggerate how important is that is Cyclone FPV damping grease. So you take this jar and throw this piece of shit away. And if you want to know why, I have a whole video about testing damping grease. And some people called me more on there in the comments. <laughs>
<laughs> so GPS on this drone, for some reason, it doesn't work here for me very well on this particular unit. Maybe because this shielding around GPS wires is not connected with the ground. So far I'm getting like 6 satellites maximum after 15 minutes on the field. Hopefully it's just a bad GPS unit and Flywoo were kind enough to send me a replacing. I just haven't tested it yet. I know some of you nasty nerds have been waiting for this section, so tuning of this drone. This is not a full tuning session with like a PID toolbox and, and stuff. This is a quick overview because I like to fly. And Betaflight has presets and sliders, so... Before you do anything in Betaflight on your pre-built drone, save your current backup on presets tab and maybe even open CLI and save dump all, just in case you need a recover. So this drone came with Betaflight 4.3 on board, which is interesting because it has GPS and Betaflight 4.4 supposed to work way better with GPS and return to home. Interesting that small angle was set to default, not 180. It means that if I crash or land tilted, I won't be able to rearm. So I just changed it to 180 right away. Well, almost right away like after a week of flying. Then I flashed Betaflight 4.4 and Flywoo were kind enough to send me a link to their diff and dumps for this version of Betaflight. The factory tune was okay, but it had some bounce back on the sharp flips and rolls and a little bit of jitter on flying forward, just a little bit. That's a cruiser, not a freestyler, so it's fine, but we can fix it. Also interesting that factory tune has 2K PID loop. That's on the 405 processor and it can handle 4K easily. Props to Flywoo for using bidirectional D-shot and that they set correct number of motor poles. Good job. By the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, like no clue, zero, then I have a whole video for you about Betaflight 4.4 setup for beginners. Link in the description. The factory settings for failsafe for sure require some tweaking. At least channel fallback settings are not set up properly. And again, I have a whole video just about Betaflight 4.4 GPS setup. I guess Flywoo guys just missed it. By the way, advice of the day. Don't leave Pendulum in the gazebo. I use Immersion RC Ghost 250Hz for RC Link, so I had to apply RC Link preset for Race 250. If you use Crossfire, then search here for Crossfire and whatever. Tuning. That's a 4-inch drone, so we just type here 4-inch, and there it is. Superfly FPV Freestyle 3 4-inch preset. How convenient. Inside of this preset, Mr. Stefan left a link to his custom PID calculator. And this is a nice interactive page where you select your battery, your motor KV, motor output limit, and then it gives you your master multiplier for his preset. So my KV is 2750, it's 4S, motor output limit 100%, and my master multiplier is 1.15. Let's remember this number. In the preset options, let's unselect with HD camera and select no HD camera. And nothing else is important here. Let's pick, agree, and save and reboot. And then in PID tuning, set master multiplier to 1.15 and save. After these simple manipulations, the drone flew a whole lot better. At this point, I could have just stopped. It's already nice. But I decided to record black box with gyroscale to check the filters, because this drone is pretty weird. It's sort of a toothpick. And in the black box, I noticed that there's a tiny noise peak at approximately 90 Hz. I think it is related to these very thin arms. It's easy to rotate them like this. Not ideal, but also not the end of the world for this drone and thanks to Mr. Karate Broad we have dynamic notch filters. I just put minimum frequency to 80 Hz and maximum frequency to 400 Hz. We really don't need to target anything above 400 Hz on this drone. And I bumped up the Q factor to have a little bit less delay. After these changes the 90 Hz peak has gone away. I think I also played a little bit with PID sliders, probably I made it even worse, but it was flying pretty good, and that's where I ended up. It'd be nice if someone make a full PID toolbox tuning with a good preset for this drone, but I am just too lazy. Overall, this Flywoo LR4 DJI O3 drone is such a joy to fly. It feels like real FPV because you don't worry much about the battery. It can easily fly for 6-8 minutes on the little 750 ma battery, being super quiet and under 250 grams. DJI O3 system frees your head from worrying about range and penetration. Well, almost. And it records beautiful, gorgeous, interference-free, stabilized onboard video in 120fps, 2.7k resolution. Of course, the downside, you don't want it to crash, it will break. And also, it's not capable of high-performance freestyle. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, check out my Patreon, the link in the description. See you in the next video, if I am not lazy.
quiet, yeah We were built to thrive, yeah I think that we've all had enough What keeps you up at night, yeah Make all the demons quiet, yeah We were built to thrive, yeah Yeah.